Hello friends, once again we are back uh, with the continuation of our series called as Indian, Indian drainage system and uh, first of all see we started this particular series last, last week and we have completed so many rivers by now. Uh, we had classified rivers into two on the basis of the location they are having. On the basis of that we classified river systems of India into two. One is Himalayan river systems and the other one is called as peninsular river systems. And whatever the major rivers that we had in peninsular river systems like Subanarika, Brahmani, Baitani, Mahanadi and then Godavari and its tributaries, Krishna and its tributaries, then North Pennar, Palar and South Pennar and then we uh, try to understand about Kaveri river and its tributaries and then once again there is an important river in Tamil Nadu called as Vaigai. And these all rivers we have discussed already in this particular series. And after that, the first day itself, I had chose a very good Himalayan river called as Ganga river. And we explained about that. Now, what I have chose is, see, I have taken Brahmaputra river for today's class. We need to understand Brahmaputra river and this particular Brahmaputra river is very, very, very important. Just because it makes a border in between. It makes, uh, see, it's... Uh, Brahmutra, Brahmutra's basins are extended in three important countries and they are China, India and Bangladesh. So, there are so many point of view that there can happen a conflict or a tussle in between these countries for the water of Brahmaputra river that we need to understand. See, as a result, Brahmaputra river is very, very, very important when we consider international relations point of view and when we consider central exams point of view. I hope you understand what I am trying to say. So, now pay attention. If we concentrate on Brahmaputra clearly, pay attention. We need to know some basics about the Northeast India. If you concentrate on this, pay attention clearly. See, what do we have? We have something called as India like this, okay. We have India and I am talking about this particular part. I am talking about this particular part of India. Okay, I hope you understand. In this particular part of India, we have got Himalayas. In that sense, I will try to revise all the Himalayas that we have. Concentrate. See, I will try to uh, make an enlarged image of India, North India as well as Northeast India like this. Concentrate clearly. Okay. This is Uttarakhand here. And then we have got Nepal like this, after that Sikkim and then Bhutan and then what we have got Northeast India like this. I hope you understand this better point. Like this. I hope you understand this. After that if I want to draw Bangladesh, it is like this. And then we have this. Okay, concentrate on this. Clearly. See if I concentrate on the Himalayan, Himalayan ranges that we have in the Northern India as well as Northeast India. See, first of all, these Himalayan ranges are formed because of what? They are formed because of convergence in between two important continental plates and they are Indian plate and Eurasian plate. Both of them are continental. As a result, we started to see something called as folding mountains in terms of Himalayas. The first mountains that are created at the top of this particular peak. See, can you see? Here. Here we saw formation of some Himalayas and these Himalayas are basically basically formed because of folding as well as piling up of sediments of Tethys abyssal plain. As a result, these, these three Himalayas, Karakuram, Ladakh and Jaskar, we are calling them as Trans Himalayas or Tethian Himalayas. That we need to understand. After that, whatever Himalayas that we see after that, pay attention from here. We have got a bigger range and the uh, uh, taller ranges, mountain ranges called as Himadri like this, in this manner. In this manner, they are extended. After that, the next range that we have is called as Himachal and it is also called as Middle Himalayas like this. After that, the last range that we have is called as Shivaliks and it is extended only up to Nepal and it does not have its extension in Sikkim as well as Northeast India. That we need to understand. If you concentrate on this particular map, see this particular range is called as Karakuram, whatever uh, the highest peak of India, K2 or Godwin Asin that we see. That particular highest peak is present in Karakoram ranges of Himalayas that we need to understand. After that, this particular range is called as Ladakh and this one is Jaskar. 
after that himadri himachal and shivaliks if you understand this particular thing we need to understand something here see we have got so many synonyms for middle himalayas or himachals that we have see himadri himachal and shivalik i'm particularly concentrating on himachal and i'm trying to say the synonyms of himachal and they are concentrate this particular this particular himachal is very much present in jammu and kashmir then it is present in himachal pradesh and then it is present in uttarakhand and then it is present in nepal and then it is present in sikkim then it is present in bhutan as well as arunachal pradesh i hope you understand that particular point now in jammu and kashmir we are calling that particular range of himachal as peer panjal range i hope you understand that after that the ranges that we have of himachal in himachal pradesh we are calling that as dawladhar after that we are calling this one as nagtibba or masuri hill ranges after that in nepal we are calling it as mahabharat ranges after that in nepal in sikkim we are calling them as dazzling hills after that in bhutan we are calling it as black mountains after that if you concentrate on this particular northeast or arunachal pradesh we have four synonyms for himachal and they are dhafla miri abor mishmi soon after mishmi ends we get a mountain range here 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 called as namcha barwa i hope you understand that particular point namcha barwa has a very significant point when we try to understand about the brahmaputra river that that is the reason i try to make you understand what is namcha barwa namcha barwa is nothing but a hill range present in himalayas which is present in arunachal pradesh that we need to understand okay now pay attention if i concentrate on this particular thing see be very attentive i am trying to uh, create something here see north of uttarakhand in tibet in tibet we have got some hills and these hills are called as kailash mountains or kailash ranges if you concentrate on kailash ranges they will they are elevated at certain altitude as a result glaciers are formed on them like this like this glaciers are formed and as well as if you concentrate on kailash range because of depressions they creates a lake called as very important lake and this particular lake is called as man sarovar lake we have got kailash range and below that we have got man sarovar lake that we need to understand if you concentrate on kailash range western part of it we have very good glacier called as bokarchu glacier and the eastern part of it we have a very good glacier called as chamayung dung glacier i hope you understand that i'll try to repeat this particular glacier once again western side we have got bokarchu glacier near mount kailash near mansor lake and we have got one more important glacier called as chamayung dung glacier of kailash ranges near mansor lake that we need to understand and it is very 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 important to remember see this side we have got bokarchu glacier and this side we have got chamayung dung glacier i'll try to write this that particular uh, glacier here can you concentrate on this chamayung dung i hope you understand that see whatever uh, himalayan rivers that we have they are basically formed because of melting of glaciers as well as they are fed by the rain southwest monsoon that we need to understand see as a result whatever himalayan rivers that we are observing they are always all the time perennial ones they can be classified as perennial ones perennials are see this particular river will be having water almost all the year almost all the year i hope you understand see throughout the year this particular basin will be filled up with by the water and those kind of rivers we are calling them as perennial rivers and brahmaputra is one such river and now if you concentrate on chamayung dung glacier chamayung dung glacier of kailash ranges they'll melt they'll melt and because of melting it creates streams and thousands of streams they integrate to form bigger river which starts to move towards eastwards like this in this manner i hope you understand this particular point i'll try to change the marker pay attention see there is a river here from chamayung dung glacier it originates and it moves eastwards like this up to what up to namcha barwa soon after namcha barwa comes it takes a syntaxial bend it takes a u turn and it will try to enter india that we need to understand if you consider on this particular river see a river is originating from the streams of melting of glacier of chamayung dung and the streams are integrating to form a bigger river called as brahmaputra 
and that particular river is continuously moving eastwards, eastwards. And this river in Tibet, we are calling it as, pay attention, Yarlung Sangpo. I hope you understand this. See, this river we are calling it as Yarlung Sangpo. See, the very meaning of Sangpo here in Tibet accent, it is purifier. Whatever the water received by the Brahmaputra river, by the glacier melting, is the purest form of water. As a result, we called this particular river as Sangpo. Sangpo is nothing but purifier. Purified water is flowing throughout the basin. That's what they are trying to say. In their accent called as Sangpo. Yarlung Sangpo is the river and it is continuously flowing towards eastwards. That we need to understand. After that, if you concentrate on this particular thing, there is a most important, there is a most important right bank tributary of Yarlung Sangpo in Tibet, in Tibet. And that particular tributary is here. In this, in this manner, it is here. And this particular tributary is called as Rangu Sang, Rang, uh, Sangpo. What is that? Rangu Sangpo. That we need to understand. Rangu Sangpo is the very important right bank tributary of Yarun Sangpo River in Tibet. I hope you understand that particular point. After that, I will try to enlarge this particular map. After this, we could be able to understand the source point of Brahmaputra like this. So, uh, the Yarun Sangpo itself, we are calling it as Brahmaputra. Soon after, it enters Arunachal Pradesh and Assam. We are calling that as Brahmaputra. Before that, it is being called by so many other names that we need to understand. Okay, now pay attention. See, we could be able to understand source and the most important tributary that we have, right bank tributary for Yarlun Sangpo is Rangu Sangpo that we need to understand. It is very, very, very important. And this Chamayungdung Glacier is, is coming under a mountain ranges called as Kailas mountain ranges and this Kailas mountain range is present very near to Mansour Lake in Tibet. That we need to understand. Mansour Lake is very important here. Mansour Lake is the reference and north of Mansour Lake, we have got Kailas mountain ranges. In Kailas mountain ranges, what do we have? We have something called as two important glaciers, western side and eastern side. The glacier that is present at eastern side is called as Chamayungdung glacier. That particular glacier is melting to create so many streams and those streams are integrating to form a bigger river called as Yarlung Sangpo, which will, which will become Brahmaputra soon after entering India. That we need to understand. Okay, after this, I will try to remove this. Pay attention. Okay, see, I have removed it. Once again, I will try to draw the whole map. Pay attention. Okay, like this. This is Sikkim, and then it is Bhutan, and then it is what is this? This is Northeast India. Okay. It is like this. I hope you understand this particular map. Now pay attention. I would like to mention those uh, mountain ranges that we have. See, this is Himadri, like this Himadri. And this is Himachal, like this Himachal. Dafla, Miri, Abur, Mishmi, and Namchabarwa, like this. Namchabarwa. After that, Patkaibam. Naga Hills, Mani Hills and Mizo Hills or Lusha Hills that we need to understand. And these are the most important Himalayan ranges that we have in Northeast India. Okay, now pay attention. I am trying to concentrate on a river, Yarlung Sangpo. Yarlung Sangpo originates from Chamayungudung Glacier. The most important right bank tributary for Yarlung Sangpo is Rangu Sangpo that we need to understand which comes in Tibet. Soon after it comes here, because of the syntaxial bend created by the Himalayas, they will try to enter Arunachal Pradesh like this. When it is entering, can I say, these mountains become, these mountains become barrier for the flow of river. Can I say it like this? Just think over it. These mountains are trying to become barrier for the flow of Brahmaputra. But if you ask me, this particular river, this particular mountain doesn't become any, any kind of barrier just because these rivers, these rivers, like Indus and Brahmaputra and Subansiri, these rivers are antecedent rivers. What do you understand by antecedent? If you concentrate on this, pay attention. See, these rivers are basically formed before the formation of Himalayas. If the river is continuously flowing in this manner, even though the landforms are elevating like this, even though the landforms are elevating like this, that particular landform cannot be elevated in a single day. Rather, it will take millions of years 
to get elevated to that extension. I hope you understand. When it is elevating slowly, the landform which is getting elevated is cut downwards, vertically downwards, continuously as a result. What will happen? If you concentrate on this, though the mountain has formed this height, we have got a way for the uh, river to move through them. In that sense, cross-sectional view would look like this. Concentrate. This is Namcha Barwa and it is looking like this. It is looking like this and the river is flowing in between this particular thing. I hope you understand. See, because of downward cutting, we see this kind of landforms being created. And these kind of landforms are nothing but valleys. There are two mountains and in between them, there is a relief called as valley. That we need to understand. See, Yarlung Sangpo earlier created a valley at Namcha Barwa. If this particular, if this particular cutting, downward horizontal cutting extension takes place, can I say the cutting can also be observed in this manner? If it is observed in this manner, let me show you. See, we don't have this. We don't have this. And whatever the relief, earlier it was called as valley. But now, the relief is called as, concentrate clear, clearly, the relief is now called as gorge. I have already explained this particular thing when I was trying to uh, make you understand about Navilu Tirtha Gorge, which is present in Saudati. If you concentrate on that, I told you Krishna River creates a very good gorge in Saudati in Belgami. Uh, which we call it as Navilu Tirtha, that we need to understand. Similar gorge is created here also at the mountain ranges called as Namcha Barwa, that we need to understand. Now pay attention. Okay, I'll try to remove this. Pay attention. Okay. I hope you understood the meaning of gorge here. Okay, now pay attention. Be, be very attentive. See, this particular Yarlung Sangpo, Yarlung Sangpo enters, enters India at Namcha Barwa and it creates a gorge. I am writing gorge at Namcha Barwa that we need to understand. Soon after it crosses Namcha Barwa, it is being joined by its first left bank tributary called as, see pay attention, Dibang, Dibang. I hope you understand. See, soon after it crosses Namcha Barwa, the river is being called as Dihang. That we need to understand. See, pay attention. I am writing Dihang here. See, this is Dihang. And it is being joined by its first left bank tributary called as Dibang. Dibang. After that, if you concentrate further, there is one more river coming and uh, joining the Dihang river called as Lohit. Lohit. Can you concentrate very clearly? See, soon after Brahmup Yarlun Sangpo enters, crosses Namcha Barwa, it is being called as Dihang river. Dihang river is being joined by two important left bank tributaries. They are Dibang river and Lohit river. That we need to understand. See, soon after Dihang, Dibang and Lohit, they join. They From this particular point, the river flows continuously like this. And this particular river, we are calling it as Brahmaputra river. From this particular point in Arunachal Pradesh, soon after Dihang is being joined by Dibang and Lohit, the river is called as Brahmaputra river that we need to understand. This is the very important point that we need to make. This particular point is made in NCRTs also. 11th class NCRT, if you uh, try to read that, you, you will be able to uh, get that particular matter saying the Hang river joined by Dibang and Lohit. Soon, only after that, the river is called as Brahmaputra. That we need to understand. Now pay attention. After Dibang and Lohit, after Dibang and Lohit joins the Hang, the Brahmaputra enters Assam plains. Assam plains. I hope you understand. When the river is flowing over, over a plain area, it will try to create distributaries. If the flow of water is more, it can create a depositional landforms in between them. Because of that, because of that, there is a very high chance that it can create riverine islands. We have seen islands being present in ocean seas and gulfs. But I am trying to mention a point here. That particular point is riverine island. And there is no other river creates this big riverine island in the world. And Brahmaputra creates a biggest riverine island called as Mazuli. Soon after, it enters Assam plains. That we need to understand. This is very, very, very important point. I'll try to make that particular point afterwards. Soon after, I mention left bank tributaries and right bank tributaries to this. Concentrate very carefully. See? Concentrate. I'm trying to mention 
right bank and left bank tributaries whatever tributaries that we have from here they are left bank tributaries and the tributaries coming from the north they are right bank tributaries concentrate very carefully from this particular point itself if you concentrate there is a river like this and this river is called as subansiri river if you concentrate subansiri clearly it is originating from tibet and it is entering arunachal pradesh by crossing himalayan ranges in that sense can i say this particular river is also a antecedent river the river which was formed before the formation of himalayas this is what it means antecedent after that this is subansiri at the below there is a very good river which is originating from nagaland called as dhansiri that we need to understand before dhansiri there is a very good river here is called as burhi dihang burhi dihang that we need to understand see we were trying to understand about left bank tributaries and this is the bang lohit and then we have burhi dihang if you concentrate on right bank tributary the most important one is subansiri after that very opposite to subansiri we have got one more river called as dhansiri as its left bank tributary after that concentrate be very careful soon after this we get a very important left bank tributary called as kopili kopili after that north to it we get a river called as kameng that we need to understand kameng see there is a river here called as kameng and below that we have a river called as kopili see these are the left bank and right bank tributaries i am trying to mention after that if you concentrate very carefully here there is a river here and this particular river is originating from uh, bhutan and it is traveling towards assam like this and this particular river is very famous and the river's name is called as manas manas there is a wildlife sanctuary manas and uh, if you ask me in india the first wildlife sanctuary uh, is manas the manas area is recognized as the first wildlife sanctuary in india that we need to understand as well as there is a manas national park in assam also and that particular national park makes a way for this particular river to flow in that sense i can uh, i can put this particular words in other words too manas river flows in between in manas national park or manas wildlife sanctuary after that the other important right bank tributary that we have here is pay attention this particular river is called as sankosh river sankosh i hope you understand what is sankosh we have got sankosh manas kameng subansiri buri dihang dhansiri kopili after that the most important one here from see from kanchenjunga kanchenjunga peak of himadri there originates a right bank tributary for brahmaputra called as tista i hope you understand this particular point very very important river called as tista tista originates from kanchenjunga and enters uh, west bengal and then enters bangladesh and joins a river called as brahmaputra i hope you understand that particular point okay uh, you you should not forget these points these are very very important if you ask me if you ask me i was talking about the river island called as mazuli island and that particular mazuli island is formed in such a way that pay attention be very clear here i am trying to mention that one see this is the uh, basin of the island, uh, basin of the brahmaputra like this if it is flowing like this it is flowing like this see if it is flowing like this i am trying to make something here can you concentrate on this because of deposition we see we see a landform being deposited without water like this this particular landform is so big that is so big that this this landform got recognized as district administration for assam state i hope you understand this particular point the assam government recognized this particular place as a district that big it is i hope you understand okay now pay attention this particular uh, this particular island we are calling it as mazuli island that we need to understand mazuli island mazuli island is made up by a bigger river called as brahmaputra and that particular river is present in what it is present in assam and it has got a district administration ad administration under assam government that we need to understand after this concentrate be very careful see the river here soon after it is being joined by tista tista the river is being called as jamuna i hope you understand jamuna i hope you understand this particular point we need to understand jamuna see we have seen so many so many synonyms 
for Brahmaputra river like this. Yarlung Sangko is the one. After that, soon after it crosses Namcha Barwa, we call it as Dihang. Then it is being joined by Dibang Lohit and then we call it as Brahmaputra. And soon after it is being joined by Tista in Bangladesh, we call that particular river as Jamuna. If you concentrate on Ganga river, Ganga river makes two distributaries. One is Hugli and the other one is Padma. This Jamuna goes and joins Padma like this. I hope you understand that particular point. I hope you understand. See, this is Padma and this is also Padma now. Soon after, soon after, see there is one more river which is flowing from northeastern states. See, this is Naga Hills, Manipur Hills. Manipur Hills has got very important lake here called as Loktak Lake. From there itself, a river originates and, and flows towards west first like this. I hope you understand this particular point. And this particular river, this particular river is very important. And in India, we are calling it as Barak River. Barak River. And soon after it enters Bangladesh, that particular Barak River is called as Meghna. That we need to understand. Now, if you concentrate on this, Padma goes and joins Meghna like this. Like this. Padma goes and joins Meghna. And soon after that, the river is being named as Meghna River. And the Meghna River goes and drains itself into Bay of Bengal, making a huge delta called as Sundarbans. And these Sundarbans can also be seen in our uh, state of West Bengal. That we need to understand. See, this is the complete picture of whatever we have to analyze about Brahmabutra. The same thing I will try to mention here. See, in our notes, whatever we have, that I will try to uh, repeat. Please pay attention. Pay attention. See, I told you about Brahmabutra. If you concentrate on this particular map, concentrate, be, be very careful. See, you have got Yarlun Sangpo. After that, it is being joined as a, uh, it is being, uh, it is crossing Namcha Barwa hill ranges and soon after it enters Arunachal Pradesh, it is being named after Dihang. Then Dihang is being joined by Dibang Lohit and soon after that it is called as Brahmaputra. Can you concentrate on this? Brahmaputra. After that, Buri Dihang is the left bank tributary, Dhansiri and Kapili. After that, Subansiri antecedent river I told you, Kameng, Manas, Sankosh and Tista. Soon after Tista joins this, the Brahmaputra river is named as Jamuna. Jamuna goes and joins Padma and Padma is be, Padma goes joins uh, what? Meghna. And the Meghna river goes and drains itself into Bay of Bengal. That we need to understand. After that, pay attention. Be very careful. Okay, concentrate on this. See what do we have? Origin. Chamayung Dung Glacier of Kailas Range near Mansarovar Lake. I told you what is antecedent river. I have already told you. After that, synonyms are Yarlung Sangpo in Tibet, Dihang in Arunachal Pradesh, Brahmaputra in rest of India and Jamuna in Bangladesh. That we need to understand. If you concentrate very clearly, see in Meghalaya, see concentrate this particular state. Okay. This particular state, what is this? This is Meghalaya. See, this Brahmaputra joins Bangladesh after crossing a point, after crossing a village in Meghalaya. And that particular village is very important. We need to understand that called as Dubri. That we need to understand. Dubri is a point in Meghalaya after crossing which the Brahmaputra enters Bangladesh. And soon after it is being joined by Tista, it is called as Jamuna. That we need to understand. After that, pay attention. See, after this, what do we have? We have synonyms. I have told you all the synonyms. After that, it creates a gorge at Namcha Barwa of Central Himalayas and the mouth is Bay of Bengal. Soon after that, I told you about Mazuli Island because of the depositional activities done by Brahmaputra, though it is perennial river. See, sometimes we see floods. Sometimes, uh, almost all the uh, all the years, the Brahmaputra makes floods in the northeastern states. That we need to understand. Just because we get highest southwestern monsoon monsoonal rainfall in Meghalaya Assam itself. If you concentrate on Masindram and Chiraj, Chirapunji, they are present in Meghalaya itself. And Brahmaputra river basin is present over there itself. I hope you understand. Brahmaputra is created because of glacier melting. It is also getting rainfall. It is also getting water because of southwestern monsoon. That we need to understand. So, whatever rainfall that we are getting in India, that is majorly, 85% of the rainfall is majorly because of southwest monsoon. And Brahmaputra is also receiving southwest monsoon majorly. As a result, we often see floods being created by Brahmaputra in this particular plain of northeast.
that we need to understand okay after that i told you about mazuli islands oldest and largest riverine island of the world it is also being recognized by unesco what is unesco unesco is a united nations body which is trying to recognize some important places as their uh, as their see uh, it is trying to make the people understand the significance of that that particular place as a result uh, some areas are being recognized by unesco and mazuli is one among them and if you concentrate on unesco it is united nations educational scientific and cultural organization that we need to understand after that concentrate very carefully the states through which Bra brahmaputra flows are assam arunachal and meghalaya that we need to understand after that uh, concentrate on right bank tributaries i told you kameng siang manas sankosh rango sangpo in tibet and tista etc after that left bank important tributaries are lohit buridhyang dibang dhansiri kopili dikhwa krishnai kulsi etc these are the left bank tributaries of brahmaputra that we need to understand okay this is how we need to understand the very analysis of brahmaputra and i hope you like this particular video uh, if you feel this particular video is having more information and it is helpful for you please like and share with your friends once again tomorrow with a new river system called as indus and that is the most important river if you concentrate on indian drainage system i hope you understand that and we'll continue this particular series tomorrow also with indus thank you